Today we will embark on a journey of scientific discovery, which will take us around the world. We are talking big picture here, I'm serious. The purpose of science is to learn as much as possible about the natural world, and there have been many brilliant minds who have led the way with groundbreaking discoveries. In fact, we will study one of the greatest scientific discoveries of all time, the idea that many millions of years ago, Earth's continents looked very different from the world as we know it today. According to this theory, the Earth actually consisted of one great continent. Over time, the landmass of this huge continent moved apart to form the seven continents we see today. The individual who first made this claim was named Alfred Wegener a German polar researcher, geophysicist, and meteorologist. Wegener's life had started ordinarily enough. He was the intelligent child of a wealthy German couple and displayed great academic ability at school. He attended university in Berlin, Germany, and specialized in astronomy, meteorology, and physics. Although he received a PhD in astronomy, he decided to abandon the field because he felt like he could make a greater contribution to science in meteorology by studying weather and climate. In 1910, the possibility of this contribution came to fruition. Documentaries have discussed the moments leading up to his scientific realization as follows. Germany, 1911. A meteorologist named Alfred Wegener was browsing through some books when something caught his eye. A list of identical plant and animal fossils that had been found on opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Wegener was intrigued. How could the same species have gotten from one part of the world to another? He examined the eastern coast of South America and the western coast of Africa and was struck how the shapes of the two coastlines might fit together. The more he looked, the more links he found. Species of land mammals in East Africa also inhabited the island of Madagascar. How did that happen? Did the animals evolve in both places at once? Or did they somehow cross from one land to the other, swimming hundreds of miles across the Indian Ocean? And then, Wegener saw it all clearly. All of this evidence led Wegener to believe that all the continents were joined together in a single supercontinent called Pangaea 200, 300 million years ago. This hypothesis is called the theory of continental drift. Wegener's evidence encompassed scientific findings from various fields. He studied glaciation patterns from millions of years ago, as well as fossils that were found on multiple continents, where they all seemed to connect. It seemed obvious, of course, the continents were once connected. So wouldn't other scientists see it as clearly as Wegener did? Unfortunately, Wegener's ideas were harshly rejected by other scientists. Since he was a newcomer to the field of geology, he was considered to be an amateur. The literature at the time also did not agree with his theory, and his ideas challenged scientists in geology, geophysics, and paleontology. Science has resisted change. He also had no proven evidence that the continents were once connected, and the biggest issue was that he did not have an explanation for how continental drift could have occurred. He eventually came up with two mechanisms that were quickly rejected. He proposed that there may be a geological force that pushed the continents away from Earth's poles towards the equator. He then suggested that maybe the gravitational forces of the sun and the moon that caused the tides also caused the continents to drift. Neither of these possibilities were found to be true. Scientists who believed Wegener also attempted to figure out how the continents were able to drift. Ideas like the expanding Earth theory came as a result. If the Earth were getting larger and larger, it would only make sense that the continents would move. And as for how the species were able to settle on multiple modern-day continents, well, let's just say that scientists got a little desperate. I think we could all agree that this next clip is probably not very accurate.
theories are true, what do scientists actually know? Years after Wagner passed away, scientists began to believe that he may have been right after all. They made various observations about the natural world that didn't exactly make sense at first glance. For example, the Himalayas, a mountain range in South Asia, continues to get taller year after year. And earthquakes and volcanic activity is very concentrated in particular areas of the world and occur in the same locations. It is as if this were happening for a particular reason. Scientists even found that in certain areas of the ocean, the seafloor is new, exactly where the earthquakes and volcanoes are most active. And an underwater mountain range in Iceland, called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, continues to spread, forming a valley that is getting wider and wider over time. So this finally leads us to the question Wagner could never answer. How did the continents move? Interestingly enough, it all relates to density. In this example, we see the red hot water rising because it is less dense than cold water. By the time it reaches the top of the tank, it has transferred its heat to the cold water, making it denser and subsequently making it fall back to the bottom of the tank. This process creates a cycle called a convection current. Convection currents also occur in the Earth's mantle. The inside of the Earth is very hot, and this extreme heat needs to escape. The heat in the Earth's outer core creates mantle rock or magma to rise due to density. Once it gets to the top of the mantle, the rock transfers its heat to cooler rocks around it and becomes more dense, lowering again to the bottom of the mantle. In addition, the evidence that scientists studied shows that the Earth's crust is organized into pieces called tectonic plates, which they now know are in slow, constant motion because the convection currents happen right beneath them. The convection currents cause molten material to rise up and actually escape onto the sea floor, creating a new level of oceanic crust. This process, called seafloor spreading, adds more crust to the ocean floor. At the same time, older strips of rock move outward from either side of the ridge. As the older strips of seafloor move away from the hot new crust, the plates, and subsequently the continents, move with it. So over millions of years, the formation of a new seafloor and the shifting of Earth's plates has made the continents move into various configurations. And they are still moving today between 1 and 12 centimeters every year. Though Wagner was not alive to see his theory become widely accepted, his contributions to the scientific community remain fundamental and invaluable. Wagner's story of persistence and determination, even when standing alone, should inspire all of us, both inside and outside the science classroom. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.